The sacred time of creation Long, long ago in the dream When our ancestors first rose up from the earth As they walked through the land They created the water The rocks, the water roads, the mountains, the rivers And just about everything that is And after everything was set up just right They kind of lay down and melted back into the earth Ever since I was a young fellow and dad took me on a, a joy flight in the desert on a micro light, I've had this dream to want to be able to fly. <laughs> Need that. <laughs> this has been something that Aiden's had on his heart for nearly six years. And now I'm allowed, you know, I can come on it and share in that. Being three months pregnant, I do worry about not being able to keep up, I guess. I guess what attracted me to this trip was, you know, first and foremost, the excitement of these crazy little planes. But, you know, it's also a personal challenge. I see a lot of my friends sitting back, playing video games and smoking a bit of pot. And you think, surely you can make more of yourself. Mm. I've never been to remote Australia, so <laughs> I think the most difficult parts of this trip will definitely be being away from family, friends, my dog and my comforts. So we've got 45 litres of fuel, which is fine for today's flight. They can actually flick up like that, oh, right. so we want to make yeah. sure they're locked in. I'm they're not really an experienced pilot. Like 20 hours under my belt. <laughs> Bit of race against time. Too far to the left, Dave. The grass will be OK, but pull it back. Today we're at the airfield, and the boys are still doing their training. They haven't got their pilot's licences yet. Talk about total amateurs. These guys are on a shoestring budget. Second-hand microlights, second-hand cars. Here's a put jack. A week until they leave, and they don't know how to fly yet. But crazy machines, eh? They've had four years to do it, but they've decided to leave it until the last week. I take full responsibility for my part in not having a licence by now. 91%? Well done. Well, you win. We've got some hard lessons to learn, and we're going to be learning very quickly. And we're learning the hard way, unfortunately. Ignorance is bliss, I think. We'll see what happens. <laughs> hey, hey. We organised three dinners. No, four dinners. Yeah. Mm. Two lunches. Mm. It's happening. <laughs> Game day. <laughs> what are you up to? I'm just sorting out the trailer so we can carry the two forty fours for the fuel. Oh, so we're carrying it? Yep. Right. <laughs> we rolled it. Is there any chance of it igniting? Uh, Is it uh, minimal? Like Perfect morning. Plane's ready to go. No wind. Should be a great day, I think. I think we should make some, some good miles. We'll follow that road. I don't know what, what you've talked about with the girls. Um, and you'll be going a lot straighter than we are. Today we'll try and fly 200 kilometres north. The first leg in an eight-week, 4,000-kilometre journey from Adelaide in South Australia to Beagle Bay in Western Australia.
journey north along the coast that we ain't gonna see for another two months. Goodbye Southern Asia, hello desert. I've never driven a four-wheel drive with a big heavy trailer through sand dunes when you're really tired and it's probably really hot and I really hope I can take it in my stride and Lex and I will do it as a team. I think I'm most excited about experiencing this with Daryl, this adventure. We've been on some adventures before, but I think this will be unlike anything we've ever done. And Daryl and I are getting married in November, so I think if we can outlast camping across Australia, <laughs> we can do anything. These little trikes only have 600cc two-stroke engines. They can only fly approximately 200 kilometres on one tank of fuel. And because the girls are carrying all the petrol, we need to stay close to the roads and in close contact. We can see you, boys. Ah, oh, where are you, girls? Just two little specks. Hello. <laughs> Lex and myself are both very passionate about working with marginalised groups and just from my own experience in working out in remote Australia is there are so many inspiring stories. So I suppose it's about sharing a story of remote Australia and if we can do that by making it a little bit exciting with the micro lights, fantastic. This is Beastmaster looking for Red Bull, do you copy over? Aidan and I have been on adventures around Australia before, but this journey takes us through 20 Aboriginal language nations. To us city folk, these are completely foreign cultures that we know little or nothing about. So we asked my friends, Aboriginal elders, Carol and Bart, to lead us into the desert. Carol is a famous Aboriginal musician. Bart's been his mixer and roadie for almost 30 years. These guys are experienced bushmen and travellers, and Carol's got a great dog called Milo. In these remote communities, they're not used to people dropping out of the sky with cameras. So we'll introduce the gang to traditional owners and elders right across the country. Ramas would cover this country up to Udina. Yeah. Yeah, they come from all around that country there. Yeah. Growing up in Australia, not having much of an education about Aboriginal culture, Aboriginal history, all of us are keen to see if Aboriginal culture is still strong in remote Australia. down to Port Victoria, mm. on the other side, yeah. right there where you come around. All that. All that's all that land. Our target for the next two days is to fly 400 kilometres, which will take us out of the green farming country into the Flinders Ranges. It's the gateway into the outback and Aboriginal Australia. I've never been to um, Aboriginal communities, so I do wonder how I will deal with seeing children in certain situations and, you know, um, starving dogs. And so that'll be something I'll have to just deal with as I go, I think. So Red Bull, this is Master. you're sitting on about 70 kilometres an hour. It's a very sedate and lovely way to see the country, over. Sensational, flying with no hands. Flying with no hands, Jesus, you fit very good at this, over. Simba thinks what it must be like driving an F-18 bomber in the high park. Yeah, exactly like that, Red Bull, exactly. 
something delusions of grandeur. How beautiful is that, eh? Just so clean. It's gorgeous. This is a totally amateur adventure. We've got very little money, so for the next eight weeks we'll be cooking and sleeping under the stars. None of us done any flying around mountain ranges and wind around mountain ranges. There's just notorious stories, even from experienced guys. So getting as far north as possible today is crucial in my eyes. If you feel something funny, darling, just come down. We'll do. Between us and the flat desert to the north is this massive barrier of the Flinders Ranges, the oldest mountain ranges on Earth. These mountains are infamous for hot winds that can flip an aircraft on its head. I've only had my pilot's license for four days, and to be honest, I'm shitting myself. Hopefully, we'll find some calm air up high and get through this in one piece. So I'm tired to be fucking flying, really. Midday with a warm northerly. It's just not optimal. I totally believe we need to get up earlier, Gobber. Make most of that morning stillness. Trying something, you just feel so vulnerable. And looking down on this jagged, arid Flinders Ranges, you, know, you feel like you're almost about to fly into the dragon's mouth. This thing can get knocked out of the sky. I'll be right. I could be left in a situation where you know, I lose my partner, I'm about to have a baby, and so I haven't gone there, and I won't. I can ride in the pool. I've got pins and nails in my fingers. Squeezing so freaking tight. No chance here, mate. Uh, Peacemaster, we've changed our plan. We're heading around the western side of the range. Over. Yeah, roger that, Red Bull. coming in there. Last minute, just get it down. Did you feel vulnerable? Vulnerable, it's yeah. Because it just makes you fragile. Yeah. The wind's up already. There's thunder and lightning around, which is you know, just a no-no to fly, especially with our aircraft. But we're hoping to get a little window in the morning to take off. But Daz hates deadlines, hates them. And I find it a little bit selfish. We have to utilise the weather, because it's not always going to be favourable. So these little trikes can only really fly safely in winds under 25 knots. Today it's gusting around 35, so we have to wait. What's going on? Waiting for the boys to get their shit together. 
at the end of the day, everyone travels differently. Daryl likes to take it slow, he likes to take it chilled, and Aiden is all about speed and he loves taking risk, he doesn't mind doing that, but it's how you find the equilibrium in those two different approaches to travelling. Aiden certainly pushes any boundary he possibly can, and I don't want to do that in a plane. I perceive it as almost him sort of trying to egg me on a bit further. And I'm just going, I don't want to play your game, I don't want to play by anyone's rules. I'm going to make my own decision here and take my time. I'm feeling about as relaxed as, as I've felt on the entire journey. There's a great unity. Jeez! <laughs> the wind's dropped around 15 knots now. We've got eight weeks before we have to get back to work. So we need to get this circus moving. Are you getting it together over there, Dazzle? You're a little bit special. <laughs> Very funny, Glassby. We're now heading out in the real desert, where there's few towns and little help. Check out that rain out on the left. Yeah, hopefully we'll miss it. These trikes don't fly well in the wet. So if we don't want to get stuck out here in the mud, we've got to fly 200 k's to the old railway town of Mari. We introduced the crew to Arabana traditional owner, Reggie Dodd. So what about a wind like this? No, not good. Aiden okay. wants to fly, but I'd... Yeah, it's not no. worth it. There's one bolt that holds the wing to this. It's the Jesus bolt. And then, <laughs> then, there's, then, <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a strap. If that bolt breaks, that strap catches you. I wouldn't like to try it. You want to get her right? <laughs> no, 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 that's it. No, 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 no. Cook stomach or something. <laughs> <laughs> this was a great trade route through here. This was the main trade route for Aboriginal people from north to south. So this is the gateway going to anywhere at all. And you've got the mm. railway history, you've got the early explorers, you've got the mining. And you you don't hear much about the Aboriginal people. But without this the the assistance and the guidance of the Aboriginal people, they wouldn't couldn't have succeeded because the people knew where the water was and where to go and how yeah. to go. So they knew the country. That was their home, you know, the sky is the roof. I'm engaging around the world. Oh, We're on a tight budget, so Reggie suggested some cheap accommodation on the wrong side of the tracks. This is actually not that bad. I'm just scared the roof will cave in. It was rats. Oh no, but like... Just don't sneeze. Okay. I'm going to do it for that new experiences. <sighs> yes. The wind's dropped right off, but the rain started. That's so one of those little unfortunate situations where you're just in the hands of the weather. With the heavy rain, the police have closed the roads. They are flooded and dangerous. Well, certainly it's an adventure, eh? We're stranded here. Shit, yeah. I think it's an ingredient for adventure. We continue forward, camp in the mud, we get stuff, you guys, we watch you learn how to pull this thing out of mud. Daz is booked away from already, so he's gonna come. But you are gonna go? Maybe. I'm contemplating. Don't go by yourself. How does that help anyone? If you get into trouble, you've got no one to help, and if Daz gets into trouble here, he's got no one to help. Where's the buddy system? Are you throwing her away the buddy system? I don't give a fuck about racing across the country to some schedule. There are people who are depending on 
certain times, me included, darling. I'm going to take my fucking time, have a cup of coffee, have a cigarette, do whatever makes me feel ready to get in the air and fly those crazy things. Yeah. This oh. is what's happening. Hey, I understand your language, yeah. and I, I feel the finger every morning. Yeah. But all, <laughs> all I'm trying to say is that is not constructive to working in a team. I do love you. You're a bad today. The roads are still dangerously flooded, but waiting is not Aiden. He ignores the warnings and charges ahead, dragging us in his slipstream. is to travel 400 kilometres to the mining town of Cooper Pedy. We expect a desert, but what we get is mud. and fasten your seatbelts because we're coming in for our final approach with Lake Air. It's just beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, you really see how heavily this landscape is formed by water, despite the lack of it 90% of the time. just spun over, turned over, completely over, ripped off the bar. It's not true, it's nice, really. Else did really well, it's full on, it's a bit of, it's a fright. I've never had an accident like that and it really shook me up. I've got someone else's life and their unborn baby in the car with me and I felt so responsible for that. Look at that, twisted like a piece of wire. It's lucky, actually, because if it hadn't, it probably would have hit the car. Bart and I started the fire, made a cup of tea, and just comforted them as, as much as we can. No, oh, it's good to see you both safe. Where's Dazzle? I couldn't get hold He's in Kuby, yeah. I reckon he's waiting outside, She's proper job fucked, isn't she? Yeah. Without the trailer, we can't carry fuel. Without fuel, we can't fly. <laughs> Such a beautiful trailer. <laughs> Just let her go. She's gone. <laughs> Do you reckon you can fix it?
this is vandalism of the heart. we were to being in the same situation as the trailer. Hopefully we'll get into Kruber in a couple of hours, minor k's away. Slow and steady. Oh, else. She's getting pretty confident on these roads and I think they can be a bit deceptive. It'll be important for her to get back in the car though after this and make sure she drives. Got to get back on the horse. You have to. It's just going to make it dragging its sorry ass into Cooper Peaky. Hey, babe. How you going? And I'm thinking about exploding. <laughs> no chance, I don't worry about it. This is the land of the Anna people. They watched the frenzy digging here for opals and named the place Kopakapiti. Kupapiti meaning white men in holes. We spent weeks hand building this trailer. There's a lot of love in it. A couple of local miners helped me straighten it out. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit nervous. So I Are might you need a... nervous? Yeah, yeah hey. Well done! Heaps nervous. Don't feel nervous because you're an awesome driver. We're heading 400 kilometres north to a desert oasis to meet Ramoth Thomas, a practicing lawman of the world's oldest living culture. Elsie, yeah, if you can hear me. I'm thinking of you, Dan. I love you so much. And everything's going to be OK. As soon as I felt the car pull a bit, I had tears in my eyes straight away because I thought, like, this is still so fresh and I'm so frightened. Hey, the poor thing, she was driving in silence and just tears <laughs> falling down her face, but she wasn't going to be beaten by this, this accident. And I really admire that quality in someone. I've headed out towards the breakaways. Peaceful. Australia is covered with ancient roads and highways of culture and trade that connect the south to the north. My ancestors wrote huge poetic songs to describe these tracks, and if sung correctly, can guide you through deserts across thousands of kilometres. We call them song lines. This is the far edge of the Simpson Desert, a brutal stony landscape which the Aboriginal people know spring by spring. For white explorers, it was a version of hell.
To Ramoth Thomas, this is a sacred place that holds his people's story, law and song. A lot of ancestral beings pass through here, and the main one is Ranba Serpent here. He's one of the key ancestral beings for this area, and he's still there today, where we go swimming there. We're hot and dusty and dying for a swim, but Ramesses and a Karinya law is alive and demands a ritual that is tens of thousands of years old. This is the spot here. This is where my grandfather told me to come here with a fire stick and sit down before I go swimming in the big hole. This humble creek is the mouth of the spring, used for generations. Our grandfathers and their grandfathers and their grandfathers have been doing this ritual where you take the fire stick first. It's like to cleanse yourself, you know? Like maybe idea when you go into airport, you gotta go through metal detectors and all of that. This is like that similar, you know? We still practice our culture, our law, the Western Desert law. They teach me that you got to respect the land so that land can respect you too. Little, little valley here, you can travel on the side here. That one. one of the awesome things about this trip is you can take traditional owners for a fly over their country. Up we go. Can I put my legs up? Yep, put your legs up. Perfect. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm alright. We're not going to go too high, eh? No, not too high. We, we stay maybe this high, eh? Yeah, yep, whatever you feel comfortable with. Yeah, we stay around this height, maybe lower, eh? <laughs> high is actually safer. Is it? Yeah. You want to hold on to this? No. Then you can get a feel. No! <laughs> no, you do it. You just hold it. Drop the thing properly, Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> Have a feel of what the wing feels like. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> that wannabe even come in here. You can see the parts here, we come in here. There's the, the wannabe, the serpent. Yeah. So, Ramath, what do those legends and those stories mean to you? It's where we come from, who we are. Yeah, it means like everything to me. And when I go, you know, away to somewhere else, I say, oh, I come from here, you know? With that story, that legend. That's why we gotta know our song and dance, you know? Like my kids, it's a given. They gotta know, you know? This their country. Well, what's going on? I'm coming down. Oh, yeah. Should we touch these reeds? Go on, then. <laughs> this is a soft landing. <laughs> Kiss him. <laughs> I like it down low, you know? <laughs> you, you like it down here? Yeah. I love it down low too. <laughs> That's too cool. <laughs> That's too cool. I like this now. Yeah. I'm not scared for it no more. That's <laughs> <laughs> ah, really good, really good, really good. Ramoth has got his ancestral song, but I don't. My great grandfather died fighting for our country. And when he died, my law and culture, what we call our song, went with him. For Aboriginal people, your song is your identity. It connects you to a certain part of the earth and the ancestors that lived there before us.
Over the next week, we need to fly a thousand kilometers into the Northern Territory to Popanya, a hot spot of Aboriginal music and one of the places my rock and roll career began. Welcome to the Northern Territory. We have crossed the South Australia border, everybody. Out here in the bush, there's not many shower facilities, so we, we called the dust bath, which gives it a beautiful warm orange glow to the skin. That's like the David Hasselhoff tan. Nice. We've been travelling for 1,500 kilometres up the very song line that connects my Ngarindiri nation on the south coast to the Arunda nation here in the Red Centre. It's one of the oldest roads known to human beings. Wow, just incredible. If you want to see your country, grab one of these. This land affects everyone who comes here. You feel its spirit and power. I first came to Papunya about 35 years ago. The stage over here is where we played. So, if you, I'll take you back to 1982, I was standing right here. Without my traditional Ngarindiri song, I went looking and found rock and roll. When I was 19 years of age, we formed Usmob, Australia's first black political band. I got into music because I loved it and I definitely wanted to say something. When we got here and set up, we had massive equipment. The stage set up with Marshall amps, Gibson guitars and Stratocasters. It would have been an unbelievable sight for the people here. Darrell, they're the pilots. Sammy was the lead guitarist of the Rumpy Band. They followed us mobs lead and became the first Blackfella band to top the Australian charts. Black fella, white fella, it doesn't matter what you colour, as long as you are true fella, as long as you are real fella. Kids look upon us, you know, as role models, and they don't forget. <laughs> All kids still listen to our music oh, yeah, they today. Still. It's too deadly being back here after 30 years, jamming with a new generation of musicians. Gospel, country, rock and reggae, these guys can play it all. See you later, you mob. Thanks a lot, eh? See you later. Warumpi Studios, Papanya, you little beauty. We're about halfway across Australia, and you can see here's motor. Need a little bit more love. Haven't heard of the engine out yet, but we're going to keep it that way. Our pilots have been gaining experience over the 2,000 kilometres of flying, but they still don't use flight plans and emergency beacons, and this is the most isolated part of the journey. What if something goes wrong and you crash? Well, if something goes wrong and I crash, then there's not much I can do about it. At the end of the day, there is a risk associated with everything and trying to be a nana pants about everything. Well, I'm not being a nana pants, though. I'm talking about, you know, why don't you have a sat phone? 
I think you should have one. It doesn't take much just to hit one of these mulga trees in the wrong way. You have a mulga branch straight through your chest, you know, and that's as good as stuffed out here and that happens. Are you coming? You're coming on your bike. No. I'm feeling really excited to go up the Daz. It's just so beautiful. And when they turn the engine off and you just glide, it's so peaceful and lovely. We're heading 400 kilometres to a desert football carnival in the community of Kintour. But we're leaving late and only have a few hours of daylight. didn't really have time to freak out. I think I just went into a bit of a headspace of let's support each other. We unpacked the spare fuel and then we quickly got back into filling the plane up and the sun was going down and we thought we just need to get out of here. Just go. And I said, nah, I'm getting you out as well. Uh, what's up? You can't, there's no way of getting in the air. All the props are fucked. We had a centimetre of water left. Like at one point Daryl said to me, Elsie, just slow down, you need to conserve your energy. So I was just ripping trees down and pulling big bushes ready if they came to have a big, you know, fire, smoke. Just let me know whereabouts you are again. Four miles east of the tower, nine miles north. Can you see me and guide me in? Because um, I've got my light on and I'm roughly over that position and I, can't, I haven't got any idea where you are. The um, coordinates we gave them were within like a quite a large radius. I was just secretly in my head hoping that they would come that night because I was so conscious of how much water we had. Okay, I'm gonna fly back to the highway. Um, and we'll see what we can sort out. It's getting dark, we need a better find you, Cobber.
Where's Dad? Well, 20k is that way. 20k? Here you go, that. We're not going anywhere. All three blades are broken, so we'll drive out in a minute. Spare blades, toolbox. We'll camp out to take the swags out. What are we going to take out for grab, darling? I not feel very much. You know? I'm feeling really nauseous and like my belly's like Arr! You want to have you? Nauseous. No, no, no. No, I can't. Well, what gets me is that they, they're treating it like it's a walk in the park, like they're, they're driving cars or something, but like they're not going to fall out of the sky and break their necks. I'm just amazed. And, and people died up here and, 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 and not realised. Yeah, for sure. You know? yeah. There's four that I know. Yeah. I was just thinking that as that last second that Aiden managed to get his coordinates, those seconds were crucial. Des and Elsie, do you copy? Hello, Des and Elsie, do you copy? Hey guys, how you going? Hey guys, can you hear the car? See the light. Yeah, I've seen your lights, we've just fired up the fire even more. We can see you. Happy enough. <laughs> it's just uh, you know, it's 20k's. It's taken us <laughs> two and a half hours. I'm surprised my jugular didn't. Can mm. see? Oh my gosh! Mm. I was hoping you brought the trailer. <laughs> I thought that's probably why they're taking their time, they're going to get all that fuel off. Because this thing ain't getting out of here. Uh, by air. It's not. Why is that? You want to fight? This is the moment we're going to tell our kids. Oh, yeah. yeah. We survived the plane crash. Totally. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thanks again for coming out. Oh, not at all. Part of me was just pissed off that the planes are just getting trashed. I'm just watching the dollar signs and, you know, there's a lot of money invested in this project. You know we've put in about 30,000. Daz has put in 10 grand. Costs are meant to be 50-50. We haven't got enough money in the account to finish the trip for fuel purposes. At the end of the day, we've got to get some money from somewhere and I think Daz is slowly working on, on maybe hitting his folks up. Oh, did you want to untie that wing on the other side? Oh. I asked him, well, just show me where you tried to take off. And I looked at it and I just went, what is he thinking? What is he thinking? I just got it's just shit judgment. Aiden's fixed the visible damage to the trike, but um, the only way of knowing if there's bigger problems is to fly it out of here. See a couple of hours. 
Just keep moving the whole way through. All good? Come on, you down. <laughs> We're on our way to Kintour Community and the annual footy and music carnival. The boys only have 40 minutes until the sun sets. I'm feeling a bit nervous. I'm still really inexperienced with Aboriginal communities and there's going to be hundreds of people at this football carnival. This is Beastmaster 2 Microlights. Uh, the sun's going down fast. I don't think you're going to make it. So I'll wait for you guys and we'll make camp if we have to. Over. find ourselves 40 k short of our destination of Kintor. So we're following them on the road as they drive into town. We are towing a land cruiser of people who are heading down to the sports carnival and the camp car and the girls' cars coming behind that. So the flying circus continues. Well, not flying, obviously. More of a perambulating circus. Mate, I didn't expect to be seeing this driver. <laughs> I'm actually looking for a car, but this is this is way more interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, look, we'll we'll help you out best we can. We've got, you know, potentially 14 football teams here at the moment. So, oh my gosh. So we we're, we're kind of a bit busy at the moment. I loved footy, so it was great for me to see black fellas just loving it, loving being around each other and cruising around. And a lot of aspects of what I saw there is what I really value in families and how I grew up in the country that children are just free to hang out with each other and play. And I wasn't as shocked as I thought I was going to be, to be honest. There was people everywhere, there was rubbish everywhere, there's dogs everywhere, but I didn't struggle with it as much as I thought I was going to. Morris Gibson is a famous dot artist. He's got paintings in New York and Paris. He started painting landscapes that we see from the microlight without ever having the bird's eye view himself. I learned, no? Yep, he's up. How about this one? I take him up. He's all right. You got one or two? Two. 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 Two plastic ones. Two plastic ones. <laughs> Long time. Tuck time, cut him off. Cut him off. Yeah. Diabetes, eh? Diabetes, you know what? 
You just want to make, just want to make me happy, Andy? Ah, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. That, that aeroplane's a strong one. Mm. I'll try. <laughs> it's such a pleasure taking the old fellas up for a fly. They don't say a lot, but I just know they love it. Convergence of three. Shit. Our trucks can't fly in bad weather. We need to get moving before these storms stop us in our tracks. I think most people just think I'm a dickhead and, and I would tend to agree. I was without a car, without any tools, without water. I had a license for four weeks. You know, there's been times where I've just gone, what the hell am I doing here? This, this is craziness. Um, but just doing it and completing it and coming out alive is my mission. That crash has had an impact on me because after that, I've been quite stressed about Daryl going up and coming down. That's not safe though. Put your finals on. Okay. I feel like I need to be there and see him take off. We're entering the most isolated part of the trip. No food or fuel or help for 500 kilometres. We're racing the storm to find a safe shelter in Balgo. That sky looks pretty groovy. There's rain coming, rain, 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 baby, rain. The rain's coming really heavy, so. The microwave had to come down because it's too much water on the wings. He's going to start camping the light, which we've got here. Honeymoon, 
Just have to hop along, eh? The land is changing. Low scrubbers taking over from the spinifex and the sand dunes of the western desert. There are billions of termites out here and barely a living soul. and jump on top of the car and we'll have a bit of a look. I said there was a dune that we'd come over and there's a salt lake and on the left they would pull up. But I don't remember a dune. Don't worry about the trees, go straight over it. All right, tell me where to go. We did um, have a discussion with at least one or two of the um, traditional men from that area, uh, and it was not a detailed verbal response. It was just as simple as Yaga Yaga was a bad place. There's bad spirits there. What a track. There's Aiden. So finally, after three days, we arrived in the ghost town of Yaga Yaga. Totally knackered. It feels like a tornado is just coming through and no one survives and remnants of life is just scattered everywhere. In our tradition, if a loved one dies, the family leaves the place to rid themselves of bad spirits. I believe that there was a death here and the entire community moved out. This wind is savage. The wind is blowing at around 35 knots, so we can't fly, but we need fuel and water. We've decided the cars will head off to Balgo community, 200 kilometres away, and we'll follow when the winds drop. If we can't take off, as long as we've got some stuff so we can sleep the night, we should be fine. Hotel rooms you can light a fire next to your bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I believe we're here to work as a team and stick together as a team. I feel that we've done wrong. Them boys moving around in them houses and that, and splitting up like that, I just feel no good. We all should have been there, or nobody should be there. You don't play with the dead with our people. The dead will come back and haunt you for the rest of your life. That's in our belief, you know? Hello? I know. What do you reckon about us coming back and getting you guys with a trailer to bring the planes here? No. What do you mean? So it's very important for me to be able to take the microlight from the south coast to the north coast. But not just chucking the microlight on a trailer and surrendering that way. And good luck arguing with that, I can tell you that much. But it's wasting like three or four days. Doing nothing. Everyone else has jobs and lives to get back to. And you can't say, yep, we've got a support crew, we've got a film crew. And then when it suits you, cut that off at the expense of everyone else. When we've been doing it as a team all along. Bags are all flat. What do you reckon? Ah, it smells like weevils. It's a bit bitter. So bad. Put in about, you know, 30 grand. I think you put in, you know, 10. You know, where you get that other money from is not my business. Oh, fucking money. You guys are stuck down there with no food, no water. And we need to get moving. We're on a time schedule, darling. We can't just wait in a ghost town for days. Well, I'm not sure why I'm really talking to you anyway about this, darling. Can you put Charlie on the phone? Be patient for three days. For three days? You want to sit there by yourself for three days? Hey, it is beautiful here. I love it. This is the spirit of the adventure. You're missing out. You're going to miss my birthday. When's your birthday? Don't you worry about a thing, darling. How much battery do you guys have left on your sat phone? If you get off it, we'll have a lot more. Can you just tell me and, like, be rude? The wind's still up, so we'll try and um, take off this afternoon. If not, um, let's touch base at six o'clock tonight. I'm with a group of people that are very different to me, and battles you have to pick and choose. There's things you've got to let go of, and learning to understand that has been a journey for me. Let's get in the air. Get out of this hell-forsaken hellhole. It's um, an hour before dark, exactly. Making progress, keep the rest of the team happy. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty windy. <laughs> uh, just keep in contact if you lose visual on me or anything. Yeah, copy that. Can you hear me? Come back. Red Bull, Red Bull, can you hear me? Come back.
Uh, Bowgrick Havoc, Michael R. 2547, approximately 3 miles out, ETA 2 minutes. They're coming over the community now, so... <laughs> oh, that's great, I feel good already. I feel good. Hello, Hello. Hello. Hmm. Where's Jazz? Where is he? Uh, Dad, you got a copy? No, he must have dropped out. Come on, Dad, get in. That's it there. I really wanted to have a go at Daryl for being um, so selfish, but I couldn't. I was so happy that he was there and he was okay. Turning up there with those kids, you know, rushing out, and everyone's so happy. That was, was a really special moment for me. Look at this, that's great. They'll enjoy their tea tonight after a couple of days in the bush, living on baked beans. <laughs> I think the most surprising thing has been the people themselves, you didn't know who they were when it began, but as we got down the road, you came together as one and shared with duties, cooking, driving, and where we are now, it's just like family. It's difficult for me because I see money as the root of all evil in some ways, but um, in the context of this trip, it has to be finished, it has to be done, money has to be found somewhere. So I've borrowed some money off my brother and uh, that will get us through. With food and fuel topped up, we're finally flying out of the desert and into the tropics. Over the next two days, we need to fly 700 kilometres to Winjana Gorge to meet a famous Aboriginal songman. Carol talks about the song lines connecting the island. And from the air, the topography, and the whole geology of the country, it's just so connected. You just get this context of changing landscape and it just makes a lot more sense than it does by car. Dylan Andrews is an elder and a traditional owner of the Boonaba Nation. He puts us through the smoke to make sure no bad spirits can enter this special place. The Boonaba people lived around here for more than 70,000 years. Oh, oh, yes. oh, wow. oh yes. Yeah. Yes. A large number of freshwater crocodiles, approximately 30, 30 to 100 at any time within Winge in the Gorge. A large number of long dagger teeth can cause horrific injuries.
While the rest of the crew swam, Dylan took Bart and I for a walk. We instantly knew it was something important. Um, he basically said, I've got your mob song and dance here. I've got Mud and Daddy song and dance. This is just incredible. This is my ancestral song that we thought had been wiped out by the British 150 years ago. He was holding, in keeping, our song and dance that would connect us spiritually and culturally to our land. Even though some of our sacred dances and sacred paintings and songs and ceremonies seem to be lost forever, but still we can feel the power of the dreaming. Dylan wants Bart and I to come back next year to spend one month memorising the song, the dance and the philosophy of the song line. Morning, Sunshine. Morning. Morning. With 200 kilometres to the ocean, our ageing vehicles are falling apart. Smelt. We patch them up and hope for the best. We're heading for the Aboriginal community of Beagle Bay, our last stop before the Indian Ocean. After almost 4,000 kilometres, it's just a two-hour joy flight for the boys. And a slog through crocodile-infested swamps for the cars. It'll be a perfect time to go and see a few crocs out in those mud flats. Let's go for a eh? Oh, there is crocs. Pretty swampy area right here. Have you been through a big, long section? We're just going through a big section right now. Hold on. We need a focus. Go it, go it, go it, girl! Yes! Yeah. Oh, that's a good crossing! Nice! Oh, come on, man! Tell me what you <laughs> so, we're in a crocodile infested swamp somewhere in northern Western Australia. These aren't the little freshwater crocodiles we saw in Winjana Gorge. These guys are salties, the people eating kind. No one wants to get in the water, but Bart was a Vietnam vet. He marches straight in with the snatch strap. There was a side road back there. I think we missed it. One of my reasons for this trip was to find contemporary cross-cultural voices. And here, right at the end of the trip, we meet Albert Wigan. And it turns out, Albert was incredibly excited to meet Carol. Oh, yeah. Carol. There you go, man. Hey, bro. Because really, it's frontiers like him, man, that a lot of our new generation, you know, 
we get strength from them sort of people that live that legacy, you know, that like sense of royalty, you know, like had come into the community. Not British royalty, but proper Aboriginal royalty, proper Australian royalty, you know. Ma, we give them big mob respect, you know. Before our final flight to the ocean, Albert wanted to share some of his country with us. So there's a big croc that lives in here, but that's all right. If he comes for us, I'll just throw the crab for him, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nothing's changed. From day one, since this country got colonised and they classified it as terra nullius, unclaimed land, you know, there was never a treaty, bro. You want us to embrace Western culture? You want us to learn your education? We'll do that, as long as you respect our education, as long as you respect our history. We all have to be a part of this story. It can't be a black or a white or this fella and that fella, we all got to be a part of this, you know, this journey of reconciliation, this journey of, of healing, this journey of, you know, identity. And some of us, like myself and my indigenous brothers and sisters, you know, it's our job to help you connect, you know? Help you connect to Mother Earth, bro. My own learning process has been, I suppose, about having a greater understanding of Australia and history, and I'd really, really be interested in getting involved with Aboriginal health and even visiting communities, and, yeah. It's been an awesome trip, and um, we'll see you on the beach, eh? Last flight, man. Let's do it. One, two. Three, two, go! Fantastic! That was awesome! So proud of you. Oh, it's a beautiful thing to share with you and <laughs> even the spirit of the little one. I think it's um, more than that too. It's been a trip for lots of people and That's it's right. spectacular. <laughs> this is the Beastmaster. We're moments away, ladies and gents. We're almost to the ocean. Can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> the ocean, mate. We're going to have a break I feel the baby kicking. It's going back. <laughs> the south coast of the Indian Ocean. There we go. <laughs> Well done, guys. Well done, Dazzle. And well done, little planes, eh? They're just awesome. Oh, this is just spectacular, isn't it? We got countries. We have cultures. There's all my country here, bud. I was shit scared every day, to be honest. Flying through some of the conditions and country that we flew through. And so to fly it over the Indian Ocean, the sense of completion and achievement was something I haven't experienced before. It was amazing. This is what life's all about. You know, a diversity of experiences, learning about other people, other cultures, and sharing in adventures with friends. And if we don't make time in our busy lives for this, we just miss out on living.
As Aboriginal people, we truly do struggle with questions like, do we have ceremony? Do we have culture? And this journey just absolutely reinstated the fact that in Australia, in this modern world, Aboriginal people are still practicing culture and are still speaking language. And I am absolutely sure that there's no way our culture is under threat. It is alive. By the laws of Australia vested in me, I now pronounce them husband and wife. <laughs> Beautiful little boy. We got a song to collect. Catch him up later.